Okay, good morning. Shavua Tov, Chodesh Tov. This week there is no uh, new, there's no portion in Lakuti Torah on Shoftim. This week's Torah portion is Shoftim, Shotrim. And there is no Lakuti Torah on Shoftim. Uh, but we didn't really finish the uh, the mimer that was on Chodesh Elul. And because it's now Chodesh Elul, so this is very relevant to us. So let us learn the mimer on Chodesh Elul. We, we've already gotten pretty far into it. And the mimer is talking about what exactly is the month of Elul? What's, what's going on in the month of Elul? And so, again, what is Judaism? Judaism is <clears throat> trying to make the whole world into a holy temple. What was the holy temple? The holy temple was a building, a physical building, and it was made to very, very precise instructions. And what had to be done in the building was very, very restricted, very exact. And not everybody could go in. And there were all these laws that don't basically exist now of purity and impurity, Tuma and Tahara. And people did over there very unusual things in the Holy Temple. One of the main things, they made sacrifices. They burned, they set, slaughtered animals and they offered them up to the creator of all animals. And also they brought incense and they lit the menorah. And once a year, the holiest person in Israel called the Kohen God would go into the holiest place in Israel, which is called the Holy of Holies. <clears throat> And, and that was the, holy, the holiest day of Israel, in Israel, which was the you know, Yom Kippur. So everything centered around this, this holy temple, which was just a building. It was just a physical building. It wasn't anything, you know, came down from a foreign planet or something, or was glowing or, you know, shining in the night or something. It was a regular building, like any other building, but it had all these... And when a person would go to the holy temple, suddenly he would feel that he's being created. Everybody, and the whole world is being created. And there's a, it wasn't like an out-of-body experience or some sort of a real weird spiritual vision or apparition or enlightenment or something. No. People just felt reality. They felt the fact that we're being created and there's a creator and that we're being created for a purpose. And that the purpose is this building, right? Just like the building was just a regular creation from stones and rocks. As um, So is the whole entire world like that. The whole entire world is of stones and rocks, and etc. And God has <coughs> the, 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 the exact instructions for everything. Of course, God will not be revealed everywhere like he was in the Holy Temple. But he'll be revealed much more than he is now. So that's what the Jewish people are chosen for. Good. So the whole business started, this whole idea, it started on Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, according to Judaism, was the day that man was created. According to Judaism, man was created. If you look in the Bible, and you, you count all of the dates of when everybody was born and the uh, overlapping dates and etc. So it, it comes out that the world was created. Adam, the first man was created exactly 5,780 and in another month or so, another month, it's going to be 82 years ago, 5,782 years ago. And that was when Adam was created. <clears throat> and he was created according to, to uh, if you count the exact days <clears throat> that he was created, <clears throat> so he was created on the sixth day of creation. <clears throat> sixth day of creation. So in other words, God began creating the world six days before he began creating man. And uh, that was 5,781 years ago. That's when the whole thing, what was man created for? To serve the creator. To do this unusual thing, 
and go against nature and serve the creator, which he did not do. A couple of hours afterwards, he didn't do it. So that's what we do every Rosh Hashanah. We try to fix this thing up that he did. And we're succeeding, believe it or not. Believe it or not, we are definitely succeeding. <clears throat> and every day, this uh, Rebbe, what's, what's going to be the, the final sign of the, this? Mashiach. Mashiach is going to come, and he'll reveal godliness. He'll make everybody decide to do what God said and to, and to do what a, a Adam was supposed to do. Just listen to God. And um, and everyone will just serve the creator of the universe who is creating them. He's not just creating the universe. He's creating like Mars or something. He's, that's also true, but he's creating, most important, he's creating me and you. For, for me, what's most important is he's creating me. For you, what's most important is creating you. Because everybody has their own job to do and nobody can do it for anybody else. So we have to make a preparation for this. It's not your ordinary day-to-day -day <clears throat> uh, activity to think about why I'm being created and what God wants from me. So in order to, to, to prepare for this, so that's the month of Elul. The month of Elul is the month of preparation. And in order to really get prepared for this, serving God, I mean, it's so unusual, in a way, in a way, so tremendously unnatural. But when the Jews do it, it'll become more natural. When the Jews do it, it'll become natural. People will drop all their weird religions, their selfish religions that they're thinking about themselves all the time. And some of them are thinking about themselves half of the, all the time, and they're thinking about destroying Judaism the rest of the time. As when people stop that, then they'll be free to feel, feel the creator. And the world, but the Jewish people, good, they show the, the, the non Jewish people, it won't be that difficult because the non Jewish people are not stupid. They, when they see the truth, is they can accept the truth. The problem is the Jewish people. The Jewish people can see the truth and reject the truth, as was in Mount Sinai as was in the first temple, as in the second temple. But all the prophets that we're reading now assure us that no matter what the Jews do, and as mad, as angry as they make God, God never abandoned the Jews, not one second. He never abandoned the Jews. He never changed the Torah. God forbid, he never <clears throat> changed one commandment, never changed his mind. Never happened. So here we are. The month of Elul is the month that proves it. So God says, okay, ready, Jews? Here's the month of preparation. You come to me and I'll come to you. I am to my beloved. My beloved, that's God. I am to my beloved and my beloved then comes back to me. So of course a Jew can say, whoa, one minute here. One minute. I thought you said that the month of Elul is a month of preparation that we're going to go out of our nature. Going out of your nature means that <clears throat> you have to do something very, very difficult, very unusual. We need a little inspiration here, God. What do you mean that's the month of El? Okay, now you can return to me. I don't want to return to you. I don't even know who you are. I don't know. What am I going to do? For preparation for what? To serve God. Who says there's such a thing as God? So the month of El, it says the king comes into the field. It says the month of El, God makes himself available. He makes himself accessible. He announces that he is now free samples, open for business. Right? Anyone who wants to come gets a smiling face. He gets accepted. You can come in. You get Yechidas with the king of the universe. Private audience. Everybody, anyone who wants to. So that's the whole month of Elul. Okay, so we learned last time. What did we learn last time? Remember, we learned that the um, the king, so, so he said, all, every day, 
So every day in the month of Elul is the re, God is revealing his 13 attributes of mercy. If God's revealing his 13 attributes of mercy, so that should be a holiday. Why is it not a holiday? So it says because the king is not royal. The king has left his palace. The king is now in the field. And in the field, the king accepts everybody. But he's not royal anymore. It's not as in, it's not as in, in his palace. When God is in his palace, that's Yom Tov. Those are the holidays. Those are special days. These are not special days. These are days that God is trying to arouse every single Jew. He's coming out into the field and arousing every, every Jew. Now that's, come on, God doesn't do things like that. Let's look at all the other religions, right? They don't have a thing that God spoke to everybody. And Judaism says that God came and spoke to everybody. At Mount Sinai, God spoke to everyone, everyone. Three million people, men, women, children, more than three million, who knows? And he spoke to all of them, all of them, everyone. And he spoke to all of them individually. Now, other religions don't want a thing like that. That God spoke to everybody? Come on, they want that God spoke to one special, spiritual, unusual, unique leader, avatar, or what do you call it? And he will come and save the world. And he is the man. He is the one. That, that, that's what all the religions want. That's what the religions want. They want a God that talks to everybody. A guy that talks to, 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 to the special people. They don't want a guy that talks to everybody. Right? They don't need a person like that. A guy that talks to everybody who needs him. Right? They want somebody who's really special, you know, Stalin or somebody else. You know, spiritual Stalin. Up in this, from, comes from the sky, tells everybody to do. Oh, that's what everybody wants. Right? The Jewish people, what do they get? God spoke to everybody. And so that, who wants a guy like this? That's basically what happens in the month of Elo. In the month of Elo, God sort of tunes it down, right? And Mount Sinai, when he spoke to everybody, God, people couldn't take it. So God tunes it way down, and he comes to everybody in a way of mercy. And Mount Sinai, he came in a way of power. He showed his full glory. People said, hey, we can't take it. Moses, you take it. <clears throat> and now on Mount of the day, now here every day, no matter where you are, you don't have to be at Mount Sinai, you're nothing special. You're just regular. You don't have to get dressed up. You don't have to do anything. God is here, available for every single person. That's what it says. That's the month of Elul. That's the 13 attributes of mercy. And even more, not only is it this, well, how does he do it? Because the 13 attributes of mercy, that's inside of us also. And that, in fact, that's the essence of a Jew. Yisrael, the name El, usually you don't say, you say Kale, but okay, the name El, that is the essence of a Jew. Yisar El. Yud means constantly. Sar means ruling. Ale is the first of the 13 attributes of mercy. So that is what rules inside of every Jew. The dominant feature in every side of Jew, inside of every Jew, is these, the name Ale. Top beginning of the 13 attributes of mercy. Good. That's what we got up to. Huh? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay, should we start over again? Uh, why not? We can't can't lose. No, no, no. This is the wrong mimer. Wrong mimer. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just one second. One moment, please. There it is. Let's do it again. We did it before, but we'll do it again. It's worthwhile to do. It says that the Hasidim of the Alter Rebbe used to learn each mimer 500 times. That's what I heard, 500 times. And these were people that were serious, serious geniuses, gifted, tremendously gifted people. In order to get in to be one of the pupils, you had to, you had to, you had to know by heart that you shall me and Bobli tremendously. And these, so we can learn it two times. Huh? I am to my we can do it quickly. I am to my beloved and my beloved's to me. Those are the first letters of Elo. In the month of Elo, Matha, we begin on the month of Elo, I go up to my beloved. Arousal from below. We do the work. We come up to God. We'll see. God inspires us, but we have to do the work. That's the main thing. Anila Dodi. 
Notice that this month starts off with Ani. Ani. And other words, every person says himself, yourself is very, very, very important in Judaism. Very important. You just have to learn to open up the proper senses and abilities and goals. But the whole thing is for the Ani. The Ani. I. Right, the whole world gets that's the whole thing. The whole world was created for the sake of man. Ani, <clears throat> but we have the man has to be properly, properly, how do you say, directed. Ani, the dodi, you have to be directed to the, your creator. He's creating you, he loves you. Dodi means my beloved. But dodi, then my beloved comes to me. First of all, you have to start off from <clears throat> the month of Elul and go from the first day of Elul, which that's now. Every day, try to think more about the creator. Try to feel the creator. The creator is creating me. Try to think about the Torah. What does the creator want from me? How can I you? How can I manifest it? Ad Rosh Hashanah. Till Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Then God comes down to us. <coughs> this is a drawing get godliness down. God reacts. He draw, God is revealed from above to below. That's the whole thing of the shofar, right? <clears throat> so far as we call out to God from a narrow place and God answers us from a wide place <clears throat> that's what it says Roshi, his left hand is under my head that's Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur God's left arm that's his Gevura and his right arm embraces me that's Sukkot Rosh Hashanah till Yom Kippur this is the level of God's left hand this is Yura fear that, how do you say the day? What do they call they call it in English? The days of awe, or something like that. Is it what? Yomim Yomim Noraim. Lefi because Shaz then who's man he's galus malchuto yisbrech because in Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur God's kingship is revealed. God's kingship is revealed. In other words, what do we say? Every moment God is creating the world. Where do you think the world comes from? Where do you think it comes from? Right? It comes from energy, it comes from a black hole, it comes from something. Okay, you can say that if you want. You can say that. You know, I mean, it, it doesn't, in the end, it becomes sort of uh, self-contradicting. But, you know, there's people who have good minds, they can... Judaism says, no, you have to open up this thing which is called faith, emuna. That all knowledge has to be based on a sense which is not logical. A sense that there is a creator. That's where Judaism starts. And then after that, you can use science and medicine and, and, and auto mechanics or whatever you want to. You can do anything you want to in the world. Fix up the world, fix up the universe, fix up the energy, make new things. But first of all, there has to be a basic awareness that there's a creator. That's the thing of Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is, there's a creator. You have to be afraid. You have to be afraid. Just like you're afraid to drive on the wrong side of the street, right? <clears throat> you're afraid that anytime you get angry at the cashier or someplace, don't turn over the table. You have to be afraid. There's no fear. Then there's not like, okay. So it says, <clears throat> that's the, the time of God's revealing, God's kingship, Rosh Hashanah, that's Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. That's God's left arm. That's what King Solomon said. His left arm is under my head. And therefore, according to Melech, therefore we call God the king. Because God's kingship is the kingship of all the worlds. God's lowest aspect, that he's a king, is the highest aspect of all the worlds. Perisha, Filu, the Olamot Nalim, even the highest worlds, the angels, the, whatever, the stars, all these things that all these other religions believe in. Tipul Aleim, Emov, Samelech, Vapachto, there falls on it, the fear of the king and his awe. Trepidation. Umizen, Nimshach, Lamata, all the angels are afraid, all the upper worlds are afraid, all the gods are afraid, whatever you want to call them. Because God is creating the whole business, and suddenly every every creation feels it. You know, they are called Paul Kriata Paulto. It's drawn down below Al Kalolos Neshamish Israel as this fear, which is Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, is drawn down to every Jew, the Kabel Ol Malchut Shemayim, to aid them to accept the yoke of God's kingship on them. Betiyah Yirato Al Paneim, and that their fear should be on their faces. Kol Hashanah the whole year, as we've said many times, that's the whole idea. Of the Yarmulka. Uh, what is Yarmulka? Yarmulka is Yire Malka. Huh? You put it on your head. Here it is. Where is it? Oh, you put it on your head. 
to show that you are afraid of God. My intelligence goes up to here, and God is much above my intelligence. That's supposed to be the idea of the Yarmul Kayarmul Malka. It means Yire Malka, the fear of the king. To accept God's kingship the whole entire year, and that God's fear should be on them the whole year. Key, year of Hashem, because God's the fear of God and the love of God, because having fear of God and love of God, this is not a thing which comes naturally. It can't be done without the help of. God, I mean, nothing can be done without the help of God, but this for especially, in order to love God and to fear God, it has to be done with a lot of help of God. There has to be, what do they call it, an implant, an implant. God has to implant in us this love and fear, mila mila from above, the eight uzman galuto at the time of the revelation, right? Like some people have an eye implant, right? People, I know, I have, I know somebody in, in Farqabad, that he was blind and they put made an eye implant. They got an eye. For and now we can see. And so what does it mean he can see? Everything was there before. There was nothing, no big deal. He just was op opened up, but you have to have the implant. You know, a person doesn't have an eye. <clears throat> so it says the same thing is to fear God. Fear God means that you just become aware. You can just see what's going on. God has created everything, but it doesn't work unless God gives you this implant of fear. He has to open up a little bit you have an eye, or at least give you an eye, or whatever it is. Zaman means kaluso. It's not actually giving because a Jew has a soul, and the Jewish soul has to just be awakened. <clears throat> and when is this revealed? The fear. Fear is being revealed at Rosh Hashanah. That's the level of fear. That starts coming. This implant that God gives us, this inspiration that God reacts, this starts from Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. That's Dodi Li. That's the second part, Dodi Li. First of all, you have to arouse your love and fear. But you have to do something from below to above. That's the feeling of Elo. So in other words, you have to start. But of course, you can't really start anything. I mean, you have to. So you have to have some sort of inspiration. And that's the idea of the 13 attributes of mercy. So in the month of Elo, is money's galos is the revelation of the 13 attributes of mercy. Lahavin to understand. This, what does it mean, the 13 attributes of mercy? So this 13 attributes of mercy, this gives us the, they say, a, a little bit of inspiration that we say, wow, I want to love God. I want I want to love God. I want to, at least to do something as though I love God, as though I fear God. I mean, if it's really true, God is creating me. He's giving me anything. So I owe him a lot. I owe him a lot. And it must be he's pretty awesome. I mean, if he's creating me all the time, that's pretty awesome. It's like a person who's on a heart lung machine or something, and the, the, the cleaning lady wants to come in, you know, and clean the, the socket. So she wants to take it out of the Don't take it out of the wall. Don't unplug it. The same that God is creating us every second. So, you know, it, 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 that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. You know, we don't want the God to unplug it. And he doesn't. He doesn't unplug it. He gives this 8 billion people in the world, not counting all the bugs and things like that. And God just keeps giving them life all the time. But on the other hand, it's pretty awesome. <clears throat> So we, in order to have this feeling, appreciation, we have to have, first of all, mercy from God. That God at least turns us in that direction. That's this mercy. And the whole month of Elul is the month of God's revealed mercy. Lahavin is that to understand this. Why are these weekdays? What holidays are when God reveals himself. We're seeing the whole month of Elul, God reveals himself. There's, there's God's mercy. If so, why aren't these days... Regular mundane weekdays, and they're not Yom Tov, like Shabbos or Yom Tov. Then there's the revelation of God. Especially especially in the time of these 13 attributes, Shem or El Yonah, these are 13 attributes of mercy. This is really high revelations of God. Right? This should be a holiday, even if we don't feel it. I mean, we, we, we don't feel the other holidays also. Listen, to a certain degree, we do. Like I said, there's a lot of Jews that fast on Yom Kippur, and they have absolutely no reason why, and they're not religious, and they don't believe in God, and but they feel something. They feel something. It's a special sort of feeling of happiness. 
That's the whole thing of education. If you're not educated, then you can't appreciate what's going on. You give me the she'ema, or that's what the Rebbe is trying to do. In fact, the matter is every day of the month of Elo, there's a revelation of what's called these 13 attributes of mercy, which is very, very high revelation of God. And they're revealed, especially in the day of Yom Kippur, where God forgives everybody. Yom Kippur is the day of forgiveness. There's certainly a big difference between Yom Kippur and the days of Elo. The days of Elo, you go to work, you act normal. But there's 13 attributes of mercy. <clears throat> Why don't we feel it? Says Hine Yuvan, we can understand. I'll be mushal according to the mushal. And this is what we said before that the king goes out into the field. Up in Mushla Melech, Kodam Baola Ir, before the king returns back to his city, Yotziman Sheir, the people in the city come out to meet him and they receive his countenance in the field. Usually the king is up there in the palace, nobody can go and see him. And it says, You know what? That, that, did you hear? Hear what the king is sitting in the field, our king in the field. What then? That he maybe maybe went crazy. What happened to him? Maybe he's having troubles with his wife. Why would he leave the palace? Why would the king go out into the palace? What is going on over here? Maybe there's a maybe there's a revolution. Uh, maybe someone's. What's happening? This is no. The king announced he's in the field because he loves everybody, and he wants everyone to come and see him. He says really. So half of the people say, wow, this is amazing. I'm going. And another half of the people say, if you ask me, I think the king went out of his mind. I don't want to see the king in such a state. <clears throat> the king is obviously crazy. He's obviously far tumult. Something happened to the king. Poor guy. I'm going to see him in such a, probably everybody's over there taking pictures of him. It's, <clears throat> it's an embarrassing thing. It's going to be in, in CNN tomorrow. The king is in the field. The other half of the people say, Listen, I, the king, I love the king. You know, I always love the king. If he's in the field and he's coming for us, I'm going to see. Come on, come with me. So as, as people just go to see from curiosity, he's in the field. Ah, as then Rashaim called me Sherot said, then anybody who wants to, no matter what his motive is, let's say it Lahakbil Panov to accept the face of the king, the Humakabalas Kulam, when they come, every everyone sees the king <clears throat> with a pleasant face, with a smiling face. Savor upon him, Yafos, Umar upon him, Shochakos, and he shows a smiling face to everybody. And you look at the king for like a half a second, you think, he's not crazy. This is something really genuine. I've never seen such a genuine person in my life. Never seen such a thing. True, you know, he's sort of, you know, not as impressive. But on the other hand, you can tell it's the king. You know, it's the king, this is really great. The king is in the field. Fantastic. <clears throat> and then afterwards, afterwards, when everybody recognizes the king and everyone sees the king, now everybody really is inspired. After that, then when he goes back into his palace, you can only go in with permission. The special people, only the special people, the people who have a special relationship with the king. Who is that? Everybody. Now everybody, the king has a special relationship with everybody. And the king remembers everybody. But you ever hear stories about the Lubavitcher Rebbe? People came after 20 years, 30 years. You were here before. How was your mother? What did you do, right? Uh, did, did, your, did, did your financial problems get solved? Whatever. You know, people say, oh, Rebbe, you're amazing. You're just amazing. The Rebbe said, what, what, uh, what do I get from this that I'm amazing? Uh, yeah, you're supposed to increase in Torah and mitzvahs. But when the king is out in the field, so everyone can come and meet him, and the, the king remembers everybody. And now when someone comes in, so oh, I can never go back into the king, says, mention your name. My name. Ah, come on, everybody. Mention your name. You'll see. Okay, I want to get it. Who are you? What is your name? I'm sorry, you can't get My name is Joe Groys. He says, Joe Groys. Let me call the king one second. Joe Groys, come right in. Joe, how are you doing? Remember, we saw each other in the field. All of a sudden, and the king sees everybody in the field. Everyone's important. Only the special people can get into the to the palace. Who's there? Everyone's special. I talked to the king. I. So it is in the month of El. Now you have to change yourself a little bit. <clears throat> a big principle in Judaism, also this idea of fearing God. What does it mean, fearing God? 
you have to know that you are not God. I am not God. The whole year I felt I am God. I call the shots. I'm the most important. The world goes around me. Suddenly, in the month of Elul, I start, start to realize it's not so. I made a mistake. I'm not God. I can't really do what I want. I can't really think what I want. I can't really say what I want. <clears throat> I'm not the king of the universe. The God is and the Torah is. And what the rabbis say in the Torah, that's the word of God. Not what I feel and what I think and what I urges me. Because see, if it says, this is talking about the Jewish people. God shines his face on you. This is the blessing of the Kohanim. This is God shining his face. This is the third day, 13 attributes of mercy. Upon him, upon him. <clears throat> face to face. Face, this word face also means the inside. God shines his inside, his inner will, to the sources of the Jewish people's souls. By means of that, we love. Because we turn ourselves to him, we're an empty vessel. God fills the vessel. And he fills it up that with inspiration, the dove kabo, he shows us how good he really is. That we desire God from the essence of our souls. But Messirus Nefesh with total self-sacrifice, giving ourselves totally over. God is so wonderful. Like it's explained in another place. For Orazu, he in Shechas This is what we said before. This is the name Ale. That Ale, this is the third, first beginning of the 13 attributes of mercy. And this is the source of all of them. And this includes all of them. Like it says, Ale Hashem Yerelanu. Shehu Bechines Or Ein Sof Boruchu. This is the essence of God's what I call light, his being, atzmo, mamish. This is the essence of God inside of every Jew. That's why the Jews are called the sons of God. like it says, says that God is a devouring fire. What does it mean, a devouring fire? Pirush, kamosh, like a like a ray, like a, a, a tongue of fire. Hayotzi, mean, a that comes out from the torch, atzmo itself, shibichlolato, in Loshumis Chalkos, that the, this tongue that comes out from the fire, it has not, nothing separate from the fire itself. The, the, the torch and the ray that comes out, the tongue of fire that comes out, is one thing. Kach also, so it speak, every single Jewish person, the Oris Panin, the inside of God, which shines. The Kalalus Yisrael to every single Jew and to all the Jews. Hubachin is Eel. This is the level of Eel. That's the essence of the soul. That's a Yisra El Shahu Bechinas Or and Sof Borahu Atzmo. This is the essence of every Jew. Whether you want it or not, whether you like it or not, whether you admit it or not, whether you accept it or not, whether you reject it or not, it doesn't make any difference. That's who you are. Lochem, therefore, Nikri Yisrael. That's why the Jewish people are called Yisrael. <clears throat> we got this from Jacob, the third of the of our forefathers. Avram Yitzchak Yaakov, Yaakov, after he fought the angel, his name was changed to Yisrael. Milash and Sar means that he's a ruler. El, what rules inside of a Jew? <clears throat> this aspect of El, the essence of godliness found in the 13 attributes of mercy. The essence of a Jew, a Jew is a holy temple. Just like a holy temple has a holy of holies, and there is pure godliness. Also, every single Jew has this aspect of ale. It's even in his name. Just like holy temple is holy. I don't know where I got this idea of temple. I mean, it's, it's a holy house. Beit HaMikdash, that's what it's called. <clears throat> the holy house. Is that, that a house is a house like any other house. It's like a big building. right? A big, big building like any other building. <clears throat> Maybe even not as impressive. Who knows? If you're an architect, maybe you can find buildings that are more impressive, maybe. But nevertheless, in this holy temple, it's holy. Everything in it was holy. There was different levels of holiness, but it was all holy. The same thing, every Jew, <clears throat> every Jew, there's different levels of, of holiness, how you they act when you're eating your meal and how you act in your store and how you act when you're doing a commandment. But still, it's, everything is holy. That's Yisrael. The Yud and the Yud and the name Yisrael more indicates al hatmada al constancy. Hapuula kamob kacha yase iuf. Like it says, this is what Job does. The Yud stands on 
constant, upirish, what does it mean? Shebechinus el, this level of el, which we said is the essence of God revealed in the world, the holy of holies, the first of the 13, and the essence, and the, how do you say, the, the, in, the inclusion of all the 13 attributes of God's mercy, that this begins be, brings forgiveness for all sins. This is the essence of the Jewish people. That's what the Jews are here for. This aspect of El, Husar, this is what rules and directs Bikirbo inside of every Jew constantly. Yud, Hainu, Shiyesh, Bakal, Nefesh, Mitzrael. There is in every single Jew, Nitzutz, Elokus, a spark of godliness, a Machayen, Nafsho, that enlivens his godly soul. Just like that animal soul, the natural animal soul that recognizes music, if you're a musician, it recognizes whatever it is, money, if you happen to be understand, you know, you're, uh, the financier, it understands business, it understands you recognize your wife, your children, your home, right? That's your natural soul. Your godly soul recognizes God. It recognizes God, it values God, it's inspired by God. <clears throat> Omoshech betivo, and it's drawn by its nature, lamaila laor beorachayim, and the nation <coughs> to light up in the light of life. Namely, what you feel suddenly, a person feels this is real life, like a, a thirsty person wants water in order to live, keep alive. Right, a sick person wants to get better. If he still manages to keep his his how do you say his mood. Wants to get better. So a, a Jewish person, by his nature, he wants to be godliness. He's willing even to give his life to God because God is the source of life. <coughs> this is above wisdom. Right? It's like a multi-billionaire gives you $1,000 for free. And then he says, okay, give it back to me and you can be you know, part of my household. You say, 100%, I'll give it back. Same thing, a Jew is willing to give back his little bit of life that he has in order to be connected to the essence of God. He's willing to do it, but that's the godly soul. That's the godly soul. The problem is the godly soul, once it gets put into the physical world, I just say, a person says, well, I'm willing to give my life for Judaism, not my money. My money, not, but my life, yes. And that's called meodecha. Once a person gets, the soul gets put into the body, so all of a sudden the body, it also has a saying. Then a person becomes, how do you say, bribed. What am I going to get out of it? Ki al chachma, by means of this chachma and das, if a person just used his own mind and his own, how do you say, intellect, his own feelings, lo yamasik bechinazu, a person can never get to this level of godliness, levatel ul hafkir atatzmo, Mikal Makal, he would appre appreciate God. He would be a religious person, but he wouldn't will, will be willing to give his life or everything. He wouldn't even be willing to give up his money for the sake of God. That's what it means that you Jews are the sons of God. Perish, what does it mean? It says the, a son, a child is like the leg of his father. That he's included in the will of his father, above understanding, right? It says Natanya, there are some children that are willing to give their life for their father. They'll give their life for their father in order to free them, free him from prison or whatever it is, their life. What are they going to get out of it? Nothing. They don't think about that. Kamo, is regular, just like a foot of a person, Shabbat al-Gabi Arosh, that it does whatever the head says without thinking about it. The aim lo ruts on... <coughs> the foot has no will of its own. And so also every Jew, that's the essence of the Jewish soul. Vazeu, that's what it means. But the essence of the Jewish soul, Jewish soul, it cannot be bribed. Nothing in the world can scare it. Nothing in the world can entice it, can make it go crazy, can <coughs> lure it. Truth. Vazeu, but the ritzono, in order to shine up Shine a person the inside of his will, the circle of a tell. A person has to give up all of his, uh, his, and you say temporary desires that are not for God, shaloya that prevent him from having, shaloya lo ratzon acher, that he should not have any desires at all. 
Like they say, honesty is the best policy sometimes. And if there's a person, you know, you have to think about yourself a little bit. You put a little, the idea is God creates you totally without asking you any questions. He creates you all the time, right? <clears throat> without asking anything in return. You can do all the sins in the world. God still creates you. That's the way it goes. He creates you. He gives you benefits. So you should give him something. When you start to think about it, maybe you should give him everything. When you really start to think about it, this is the ultimate pleasure, the ultimate meaningful thing, the ultimate reason why we're here. You're going to live for yourself. <clears throat> yourself is going to end one day. Everybody goes to gra graveyards are filled with people that thought that the world couldn't exist without them and that they were the boss and that they were God. <clears throat> and suddenly it's revealed the truth. If so, why not reveal the truth now even more? But that's the whole thing. A person that really devotes himself to God, it activates him. It doesn't zombieize him. It doesn't make him into somebody who just sits there and says, holy, 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 holy all day, right? I have, there's no me and there's no I and there's no anything. All there is is just holy. That's, that's not Judaism. Judea, holiness activates you. Holiness is life. <clears throat> So that's the idea of the month of Elul. It's the month is supposed to activate us. We activate this aspect of ale inside of us. And that's what and will inspire us, giving the inspiration to serve God in the month of Tishrei. But first of all, <clears throat> let's understand this idea of God coming out into the field, which that we're going to understand, God willing, tomorrow. Now we learn Devar Malchut. <clears throat>